the capital asset pricing model, and the security market line. According to the capital market line, to obtain the best risk and return combinations, investors invest in the market portfolio and then borrow and lend at the risk-free rate, moving up and down the capital market line to achieve the desired level of risk. In a well-diversified portfolio, on systematic unique risk is diversified away, and the portfolio risk consists of systematic risk. Systematic risk is measured by covariance. An individual security brings its covariance with the other securities to the overall risk of the portfolio. So the relevant measure of risk for individual securities is its covariance with the other securities in a well-diversified portfolio. Now assume all rational investors hold the market portfolio. An individual security brings its covariance with the market to the market portfolio. So if all investors hold the market portfolio, the relevant measure of risk for an individual security is its covariance with the market portfolio. Now we know the proper measure of risk for a risky asset. Now let's develop our pricing model. Our basic pricing model says the expected return for risky asset I is equal to the risk-free rate plus a market risk premium for asset I. The market risk premium must be the market price of risk times the amount of risk. The risk premium of the market portfolio is the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. We want the per unit price of risk. The measure of market risk is the asset's covariance with the market. The market's covariance with itself is the variance of the market. So the unit price of market risk is a market risk premium divided by the variance of the market. That's risk premium per unit of market risk. The measure of risky asset I's market risk is asset I's covariance with the market. Asset I's market risk premium is a risk premium per unit of market risk times asset I's market risk. This is analogous to dollars per gallon in your gasoline bill at the gas station. The unit measure gasoline is gallons. The market price of gasoline is dollars per gallon. Dollars per gallon times the number of gallons you put in your car equals your gasoline bill. The price of market risk per unit of market risk times the amount of market risk is the market risk premium. Let's rearrange the equation and move the division by the variance of the market over to asset I's covariance. This standardizes the covariance. This measure is called the asset's beta. Both covariance and beta can be used to measure an asset's unsystematic market risk. Beta is a standardization of the covariance measure and is the more common measure of market risk. Beta is a covariance with the market divided by the variance of the market. And so beta measures the sensitivity of a security's return to a change in the return of the market portfolio. The capital asset pricing model, also called CAPM, is a theory of risk and return that states in equilibrium the expected return on an investment is equal to the risk-free rate plus a premium for market risk. The risk-free rate reflects the time value of money. The market risk premium is the reward for bearing market risk. Beta is a measure of the amount of asset I's market risk. The capital asset pricing model predicts a positive and linear relationship 
between the expected return and beta. When beta equals 1, the security has the same market risk as the market portfolio. When beta equals 0.5, the security has half the market risk as a market portfolio. When beta equals 2, the security has twice the market risk as a market portfolio. And when beta equals 0, the security has no market risk. It's a zero beta asset. The equation of the capital asset pricing model is the equation of a straight line with the risk-free rate as the intercept. This line is called the security market line. The capital market line related expected return to standard deviation, total risk. The security market line relates expected return to beta, where beta is a measure of systematic market risk, the risk that is priced by the market. Therefore, in equilibrium, all individual securities and all possible portfolios must fall on the security market line. The slope of the security market line is asset I's risk premium divided by asset I's beta. It's asset I's unit price of risk. It's also called the reward to risk ratio. In equilibrium, the reward to risk ratios must be equal for all assets because in competitive financial markets, risks must be priced the same for all risky assets. Suppose a risky asset fell above the security market line. It has a higher expected return than assets of comparable risk. This asset is very valuable. It's underpriced and is worth more than it costs. Investors would seize this positive net present value opportunity. Bidding up its price as its price increases, its return will fall until investors are indifferent between it and comparable investments, that is, when it's priced to fall on the security market line. Now suppose a risky asset fell below the security market line. This asset has a lower expected return than assets of comparable risk because this asset is overpriced. Investors would be selling this asset out of their portfolio to take advantage of its high price. The selling would cause its price to fall, and its return will rise until it falls on the security market line, and there is no more advantage to selling the asset. So in equilibrium, all assets must fall on the security market line. Let's review the difference between the capital market line and the security market line. The measure of risk of the capital market line is standard deviation, total risk. For the security market line, the measure of risk is beta, systematic market risk, that risk that is priced by the market. For the capital market line, only efficient portfolios fall in the capital market line. All securities and all possible portfolios fall in the security market line. The capital market line holds only for efficient portfolios. The security market line holds for all securities and all portfolios. Let's look at an example in the use of the capital asset pricing model. TR Corp just paid a dividend of $525 per share. Dividends are expected to grow at an annual rate of 4%. TR is riskier than the average stock, having a beta of 1.5. The yield on Treasury Security is 5.28%. The historical market risk premium is 7.4%. TR stock is currently selling for $42.25. Is it fairly priced? 
we recognize that this cash flow stream conforms to a Gordon growth model. We need next year's dividend, so we compound the current dividend by the 4% growth rate to get the dividend next year. We divide next year's dividend by the cost of capital minus the growth in the dividend stream. We need the cost of capital. We'll estimate it using the capital asset pricing model. Our proxy for the risk-free rate is the yield on Treasury securities, 5.28%. We'll use the historical market risk premium, the proxy for the expected market risk premium. And we multiply the 7.4% market risk premium by TR Corp's beta, 1.5 to get the market risk premium for TR Corp. Our estimated cost of capital is 16.4%. So we divide next period's dividend by the 16.4% cost of capital minus a 4% constant growth in the dividend stream. And we get a price for TR Corp stock of $44.03. It's currently selling for $42.25. The stock is underpriced according to our calculations. Portfolio betas. The beta of a portfolio is a value weighted average of the betas of the securities comprising the portfolio. Suppose we have a portfolio consisting of securities A, B, C, and D. We have their betas, the market value of the securities, and the total market value of the portfolio. Now let's calculate the beta of the portfolio as a weighted average of the betas of the securities making up the portfolio. For each security in the portfolio, we take its market value and divide it by the total market value of the portfolio to get its portfolio weight. We multiply the securities beta by its portfolio weight. Do that for all securities and sum across all securities to get the beta of the portfolio 1.005. Some special assets. Consider a zero beta asset. A zero beta asset is a security with no market risk. Its beta is equal to zero. So what's the expected return of a zero beta asset? Given its beta is equal to zero, according to the capital asset pricing model, the expected return of a zero beta asset is a risk-free rate. But is a zero beta asset a risk-free asset? A zero beta asset is not necessarily a risk-free asset. A risk-free asset is completely risk-free. It has no market risk. It has no unique risk. A zero beta asset has no market risk, but it may have unsystematic unique risk. So why does a zero beta asset have the same expected return as a risk-free asset? A zero beta asset is riskier than a risk-free asset because it may have unique risk. The answer is the relevant risk is systematic market risk. That's the risk that is priced by the market. If you take a zero beta asset and put it into a well-diversified portfolio, its unsystematic unique risk is diversified away. And so within a well-diversified portfolio, it is essentially a risk-free asset and so it is priced to yield the risk-free rate. Another special asset is a negative beta asset. The risk premium of a negative beta asset is negative. It's priced to give an expected return below the risk-free rate. But negative asset betas do have market risk. A negative beta asset with a beta of negative 1 
can be thought of as having the same market risk as the market portfolio in a contrary way. Contrary because negative beta assets can be a form of insurance policy. They promise a positive return in adverse states of nature. Let's summarize our important points. Investors holding well diversified portfolios view variance or standard deviation as a proper measure of the risk of portfolios. But for well diversified investors, Variance is not the proper measure of risk for individual securities. The relevant measure of the risk of an individual security is its contribution to the variance of a well-diversified portfolio. It contributes its covariance with the other securities in the portfolio. Under the assumption of homogeneous expectations, all investors hold the market portfolio. Therefore, we measure risk as the contribution of an individual security to the variance of the market portfolio. This contribution is the security's covariance with the market portfolio, as commonly measured as the beta of the security. Most investors hold diversified portfolios, so that the beta of a security is likely to be a reasonable measure of its risk.